The year is 1911. A young German Earth scientist named Alfred Wegener is thinking about how continents and oceans have changed over geologic time. His ideas are revolutionary because the Earth's surface is thought to be fixed, permanent, and unchanging. Little did he know that his concepts would someday become the basis for the modern theory of plate tectonics. My theory about drifting continents has not been well received. The others call it preposterous, foolish, outright lunacy. Indeed, I have proof, but still, it may not be enough. I am confident that someday the efforts of scientists will succeed in uncovering all the necessary evidence. Only then will my theory be embraced and accepted as the truth. In 1930, while still refining his theory, Alfred Wegener died tragically on an expedition to Greenland. An entire generation of scientists would follow before his ideas were taken seriously. The evidence he looked for eventually was discovered. It came from the oceans, from the continents, and from views taken high above the Earth's surface. Inspired by Wegener's hypothesis, plate tectonics has emerged as one of the greatest scientific theories of the 20th century. Look closely at the coastlines of eastern South America and western Africa. The way they would fit together is certainly intriguing. Wegener thought so too. He was curious about reports of 250 million year old glossopterous ferns and mesosaur reptiles that had been dug out of rocks in South America, Africa, and from scattered locations across the southern hemisphere. Other rocks contain signs of widespread glaciers, a clue that Wegener interpreted as evidence for vast ice sheets in areas now covered by tropical forests. The only explanation he concluded was that the continents had once been joined together over an area that once straddled the South Pole. He went even further and postulated that this large landmass had somehow broken up and then moved apart. He called this giant supercontinent Pangaea, meaning all lands. By proposing the concept of continental drift, Wegener's bold ideas did not fit in with the accepted theory of permanence, the notion that the continents and oceans were as old as the Earth itself. He believed that the lighter, less dense crust of the continents floated like blocks of ice on the more dense, stationary crust of the ocean floor. Wegener based his conclusions on many lines of evidence. From matching fossils and sedimentary rocks, he theorized the existence of Pangaea. And from the buoyant properties of ice flows, he suggested a mechanism for the movement of continents. Despite his findings, little was known about the Earth's crust during the 1920s. Almost 20 years after his death, new technologies emerged that began to fill the gaps that Wegener hoped would someday support his theories. By 1950, oceanographers had begun using echo sounding and sonar to map the details of the ocean floors. There, they discovered enormous mountain chains of fractured crust, far more extensive than any known on land. The rugged peaks appeared to wind down the centers of ocean basins like stitches on a baseball. Scientists named them mid-ocean ridges, topographic features which encircle the globe for a distance of 74,000 kilometers. In other places, they found steep volcanic cones called seamounts and deep arc-shaped trenches that border the edges of continents and island chains. The ocean floor, it seemed, 
was an exceedingly rugged landscape, a bizarre and mysterious terrain of which Wegener had little knowledge. As oceanographers were busily mapping the sea floor, geophysicists had new evidence, evidence of patterns that were marked by the locations of thousands of earthquakes and volcanoes. Even more puzzling were the patterns of magnetism in volcanic rocks that flanked the mid-ocean ridges. Further study revealed that these rocks were far younger than anyone had imagined. By the late 1960s, it was clear that enough evidence had been gathered to confirm Wegener's theory of continental drifts. The ridges, trenches, distribution of earthquakes and volcanoes, and even the patterns of relatively young oceanic crust were all the results of shifting continents.